This is the final video in a series on uh, the bag extension uh, and I will start this video with summarizing what we have established so far. In fact, the process we have established uh, sometimes is called finite loop bag extension. So the process was about this thing. We start with a triple of objects, a universal set of a universal set, a semi ring and a sigma additive measure on that. Now we learned how to extend this object into the triple like this. Uh, the same universal set, the minimal ring enveloping around your semi ring, and the tilde measure, which is standard extension of this M over this minimal ring. And now we also know how to extend this further into the object like this where x is the same universal, universal set, m star is the external measure, and f is the sigma algebra of all Lebesgue measurable subsets. Of course, this extension is only possible when you have this extra assumption that your universal set is a part of your minimal enveloping ring, and the measure m is sigma additive. A uh, canonic canonical example which I suggest you keep in mind when you think about this extension is the example of this universal set, 0, 1, segment 0, 1, half open interval 0, 1, and the collection of all half open sub intervals of interval 0, 1. And the measure, of course, it, it is not set here, but the measure, of course, is a length measure here. If you apply this process to this triple, with the length measure, which is not mentioned here, but we mean it here, we will end up with the Lebesgue measurable subsets, or Lebesgue measure space, in fact this triple sometimes referred to as Lebesgue measure, measure space, on the interval 0, 1. In the future, it's very often happens that we just identify these three notations, rather than distinguishing them, and the reason this extension is called finite is that the measure, the final measure of your universal set, delivers a finite number. It, it is just set here because your universal set is such that it comes from the minimal enveloping, enveloping ring. Now, this is a very nice construction, very universal construction, which covers lots of different settings. Yet, if you think about this, another canonical example when your universal set is R and your semi ring is the semi ring of all half focal intervals on this, on the real line, again with the length measure, this setting cannot be fit into this scope. So, the following adjustment, the following adjustment or the following extension of this scheme is actually, was actually suggested. Uh, and the scheme is called sigma finite the big extension. So this time we talk about not finite but sigma finite the big extension. So this extension will work, this method will work when your universal set X you no longer require this restrictive assumption but you this time require that the universal set is a disjoint union of elements of your original semi-ring. Something you do have in, in case of real line. Now, given this assumption and given this partition of your universal set into this smaller universal sets, you do it now like this. You introduce the structure, which I call SN, which will be like this. So you take your elements of your original semi-ring and you intersect them with the particular xn as well the result this result will be again the member of the semi ring because remember semi ring is closed under intersection but not all elements of your semi ring will end up here and now what you do you take this semi ring obviously obviously actually that this sn will be a subset of your original semi ring again because the intersection uh, because the semi ring is closed under intersection. So your original measure, this measure, you can res restrict your measure on the smaller semi ring and you can do this extension. This, this extension. 
because now for this smaller semi ring, the universal set will be the xn rather than big X. So for the smaller SN, for the smaller semi ring, xn will be the universal set, and your new universal set will satisfy this assumption. Your new universal set will be here in the minimal ring enveloping enveloping your new smaller semi ring so we can do this this finitely big extension for this smaller universal set and I will call this I will denote this triple like this smaller universal set the smaller universal set the associated sigma algebra the sigma algebra constructed according to this finite extension and the associated external measure again it will be in principle it will be different external measures for different universal sets now here's the construction of the Lebesgue extension in this case you define the f object which if you want to indicate the dependence of on the original s and m yes on the original couple sm <coughs> then you collect all of those subsets such that if you intersect this subset with xn that will be the element of this fn for all n's now you introduce a smaller object which i call f not which also depends on s on, on the couple sm this will be the elements of your first object fsm with the extra assumption that if you take this series, if you take this series of all intersections of A with X ends and you apply the corresponding external measure, this series converges. And now you define your measure. You define your measure only on this smaller F naught set uh, by the obvious identity, like this. So you take this number as the value of your measure, and I call this measure mu. Now, theorem says this, the extension theorem says this, and that's a sigma finite extension theorem. It says that F is a sigma algebra, F naught is a ring, and mu is a sigma additive measure. And I put here the asterisk to emphasize the following observation, that the sigma additive measure here is interpreted like this. If you have a sequence of elements of this f, then the following is true. If this series converges, then the union like this. So if you have a set, if you have a sequence of ANs which are pairwise disjoint, such that this series converges then the disjoint union A belongs to the smaller F0 ring and you have this identity of sigma additivity also if this series diverge then this set A is in fact doesn't belong to the smaller F0 subalgebra and so you cannot compute your mu on such set A Right. So in fact, this sigma algebra, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. In fact, the sigma additivity claim is stronger than just the definition of sigma additivity because not only we say that because the uh, the classic, I mean, the definition of sigma additivity, the way it was defined, says that if the union belongs to the ring, then you have this identity. Whereas in our case, we can say more. We we provide a test test basing on the sequence itself whether the union belongs to the ring and this test is if and only if test because we have these two clauses now the other thing which I have to comment on is that uh, there's also another part of this theorem which is missing uh, the construction itself here of these two of these three objects of the of the sigma algebra f of the ring f naught and measure mu this construction also depends, at least the way it is done, on this partition. 
Now, it is a part of this theorem, which uh, uh, the, it is a part of this theorem that, in fact, none, none of these objects depends on the partition. That is, if you have another partition of X, similar to this, then the objects F, F0, and mu, constructed with respect to this other partition, will in fact be the identical to the original triple of objects F, F0, and mu. Now, the proof of this theorem goes beyond of this presentation. Uh, it's not a difficult proof. In fact, if you follow the, all of the comments uh, I made earlier, and if you understood them, uh, finding the proof for this theorem should be, is a should be a relatively easy task. Although it's a rather lengthy, but it is a, like I said, if you followed my comments on all of the earlier presentations, all of the earlier notes, then uh, you probably will be able to find the proof independently.